Welcome back to another episode of 90% Mental, man. I am I am elated right now on this Friday the 13th, right? This day of gloom and doom, but it's not actually. We're going to be talking about some great stuff today. Talk about music, mental skills, training, all sorts of good stuff. But before we get into to music and dual encoding, I'm going to share with you one of my favorite people in the world who's not only my my friend, my collaborator, my mentor, my colleague, Graham Bedchart, man. What is going on, G? Graham Parr, what up, baby? Great to be here. Uh, I feel just like you, man. Uh, beyond excited for doing this. I mean, me and you have been working behind the scenes for years together and then really focused, you know, the last half a year, really dedicated to creating some cool stuff, man. So, man, great to be here and uh, excited, man. Right on, man. Well, let's let's get into to why we want to talk today. Um, you and I both have this love, not only for mental skills and training people at all levels, but music and how we make music, we listen to music, we get uh, motivated, inspired by music. But throughout your career, how has music been uh, essential for you to be a mental performance coach, but just you as a whole? I mean, in general, I've, I've loved music my whole life. You know, my entire life, music has been something that's made me feel feelings, made me feel emotions. Um, music has always captivated me, and I've always loved it. And it's just been something that has called me so strongly that it's, it's just a love for music. And then when I started to realize that, like, wow, when you learn with music or you put some intentionality to music and, you know, we start to put some coaching and have music in the background, now we, we have like a whole new space. And so like coming into this new space with you where we're taking music and making mindset music, peak performance music, music designed to help get you into the zone, right? Because we know music already kind of does that. So we're doing it with intentionality to help get you into a great place, a great state. And for me, I've had a few people ask me recently, you know, like how did, how is this happening? How are you coming with this, this innovation to make music. And for me, it's always just been a service of love grant that I love it. And I love music so much. It just feels like a great way to share with people. And, uh, it just, it's been calling, you know, yeah. it's been calling, man. Right. Well, you know, we're, we're going to get into our collaboration and share with everybody what we're doing and our vision with it, but being a coach and also being an athlete, uh, how has music, been for you as far as getting prepared for whether if it's for you know coaching or keynote speaking or even when you're playing basketball back in the day like how important was music it was everything you know a lot of times you would use music to build up energy you know you're like okay i need i need to build some energy maybe i'm a little tired today or i i don't necessarily want to practice or train or we have double days you know going back to football and we would use music to elevate energy to bring energy to, to bring a certain morale to it and then other times when it was super tense, you know, and there was a ton of energy, uh, maybe before championship games or uh, like really big moments, we would use relaxing music to come down, more soothing music. And I think there's this notion that all music for sports is like you get pumped up for sports. And there's definitely time to get pumped up for sports, but there's also a massive time to relax and to bring yourself down into the zone. So music, G, has always been something that's been with me. I think when I was younger, I probably got myself pumped up more with music. And then as I got into being like a college athlete and then beyond that, I realized, well, a lot of me coming into the zone is learning to relax. And one really powerful moment for me, uh, you know, I've done some work with Jalen Brown, the basketball player. He would talk to me before he would play in the Eastern Conference Finals. And he would say, you'd think I was listening to like Migos or like, you know, getting up. He's like, all I'm listening to, Graham, is mellow music that brings me down. So music has affected everything. I think it affects all people. And the idea is if you can become aware of what you need, just like Jalen Brown was like, okay, I need some relaxing music to soothe me. I don't need to get up when there's already a ton of energy, right? When there's no energy, now I have to elevate myself. Right. You know, you know, you know it's funny that you say that because obviously you know that I, um, I do a lot of work with, with Jake Plummer on another podcast. And he talks a lot about throughout his career. He spent most of his career – listening to Metallica and heavy music, which is great. Uh, that can get you going and get your energy going. Yeah. But he had actually a, a coach that actually watched his his energy and started watching him do his pre-performance routine, if you will, and said, man, you're losing so much energy 
by this music. He, like, you need to change some stuff up. And so later, like toward the end of his career, he started listening to Bob Marley. And that's, yeah. that, and that's all it was. And Max Griffin, who's an MMA fighter, who I worked with as well, he, he, he was losing so much energy with the music that he was listening to before his fights. And now he listens to Bob Marley. Yeah. So it's really interesting. You know, I think you need to pick and choose what really resonates with your frequency. You have to know that, right? Because if you're already elevated and then, like you said, listen to Metallica or maybe some intense rap, that's just going to take you too much, right? And <laughs> like maybe, maybe Jake Plummer had been doing that since he was a teenager, right? Or a kid and you're kind of effective. And then as you become a pro at these different levels, you're like, that takes me out of my zone. And then so you think of Bob Marley, right? Reggae, the whole vibe is different, right? It's a much more mellow vibe. It drops you right into it. So here you're right. looking at these and pros who realize, wow, music can help me get into my zone. And it doesn't have to be up. What Again, what I've noticed about the up is a lot of times the up is for practice, for the days you don't have the energy, you don't want to do it. Right. Uh, and then the, the, the down are when there is energy. You know, you're, you're playing a professional football game or a big high school game or a big college game or whatever it is. You're like, well, I need to mellow out because I don't want to burn my energy before. And so I need to kind of get into the zone. And if I can get myself into the zone with music, now I'm not just throwing energy away in all these different places, right? I'm using energy at a very high level, aligning my frequency and my vibe to stay tuned yeah. in and not just letting energy scatter all over the place. Exactly. And what do you think about using music for recovery? So when we reflect and come down from our performance? Yeah, without a doubt. Uh, recovery is such a crucial part and tying in music to re recovery makes complete sense on so many levels. Uh, just relaxing yourself. I mean, you can do different forms of music can get you into a meditative state, can slow things way down, right? You slow the beat down, you slow the melody down. And then everything slows down and then all of your body starts to slow down and now you're relaxing and you're getting into that recovery state. Yeah, you're sleeping better. Um, you're, you're, you're recovering at a much stronger level. You're not releasing so much fight or flight, right? You're learning how to really come back and music can tie you into that. Just think about if you've ever had the experience of going to a spa or, you know, like yeah. maybe, maybe like a, a, a massage or something. Are they playing like Metallica or <laughs> right. like Migos? No, in general, like <laughs> it's very gentle music and it gets you into a zone, right? You yeah. drop into the state. Now you may not want to be into that super drop state before you're going to play a, a, in the Super Bowl, right? So you don't do that. But during when you recover, that's absolutely how you recover. And so tying that music into that can keep you into that flow recovery state. It could be, it could even sound like water uh, trickling down a stream. Um, yeah. kind of like just mellow beats kind of guiding you anything like that um, yeah got a doubt I, I i call that garden music man send out <laughs> yeah. garden music right <laughs> yeah hey, it's real though it's real it is it's real real and you're you're absolutely right it's it's the type of music and the frequency that you're going to plug into it actually it it dictates or connects with that with that state of mind that you need yeah. right for your performance or for your recovery a hundred percent um so it's recognizing it, right? So it's recognizing if you're like super low, right? Like I have no energy, but you know you're about to walk into a two-hour practice or two-hour workout. You have to create that energy, mm. right? So on your way to practice, you might have your headphones on and you're increasing your pace. And the rhythm that's on your headphones has a high pace, more beats per minute, right? And it, it, it's getting everything going. So it's elevating everything because you know, hey, I have practice. Uh, I got to create this energy right now. And so you're aware 30 minutes before practice that, Hey, I have to create some energy right now. So you don't just go to practice and you have a sluggish start and you, you know, halfway through, you find it. It's before I come, I'm going to elevate my energy right now and think about elevating music. It moves at a faster pace. Uh, it's quicker. It's moving. It might have more intensity in it. Think of a scene in a movie that has more intensity, right? It's moving yeah. fast. The uh, different instruments come in. So we can do all these things with music. But it takes someone to be self-aware and knowing, hey, I'm flat right now or a little low, which is normal, but I'm about to get into a high octane situation. I got to elevate myself. So let me have my elevating music. Let me have right. my music that gets me up into the zone. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I love it. And, you know, a couple of years ago, we're going to kind of go on the journey of kind of how you and I, you know, we've been working together for a long time, but how we actually met 
to do to mindset music. But a couple of years ago, you created this and like no one, as far as from where I was sitting, no one was doing being a mental performance coach, creating this type of music a couple of years ago. And you created this incredible album called unlocked. Tell them just, you know, let my listeners know a little bit. What, what was that album all about? What motivated you and how it's actually gravitated moving you towards this as kind of a, a more of a focus with what you're doing? Well, I found myself, I was recording an app. I was making an app called lucid. And so I was working on a microphone every day. Every day I was working on a microphone and I got better and better at projecting my voice, better and better at getting comfortable with the mic. And we were the person who was helping us with the microphone was also a music producer. And one night he came back. Uh, we were getting ready to record. He said, last night a beat came to me. And he said, I just have to play it for you right now because it just came to me and it said, show it to you. And I said, no problem. And he played the beat. And I was like, this is amazing. <laughs> and immediately what came to me was like, this is greatness, man. Like, this is greatness. This is greatness. And, it, and we said, let's just record right now. I, I can hear it. I can hear this is greatness. Let me just like talk into this music. And so he played the beat and we had the recording set up and I just started coaching. Right. So I wasn't singing. I'm not rapping. There's nothing like that. I just just like I'm talking to you, I started coaching, but we had the beat behind. And we did one take in the sound and it sounded great. And so we were building an app, but in the middle of building an app, we realized like something else had showed up. And I remember a vivid moment, a guy named Andrew Zimmerman, one of my business partners, amazing guy, played basketball at Stanford. In that moment, he said, hey, well, if Lucid doesn't work out, you guys need to make music. And mm. I remember hearing it in one of those moments where I was like, I heard what he just said. And for some reason, I knew it was powerful. And so we ended up finishing making Lucid. We built a great app. And at the very end of making Lucid, we were like, hey, let's make an album. We were running out of cash. We were like, let's, let's just make an album. Can I hire you, Frederick, to make an album? And one of the last things Jason Sturman did, the founder of Lucid, is he allowed us to make an album. And so we made, wow. we made Unlock. We made the album with Frederick Alexander, an incredible producer, who, like you, he's who I'm working with now again, making tons of music. And we made Unlock. And it just started coming to me what to coach. And the way we designed the album is we wanted the album to give you an emotional experience. So we wanted it to start off relaxing, bring you to a pinnacle, like a crescendo, and then mm -hmm. relax you on the end. Kind of like a workout, right? You warm up, you peak, main intensity, and then you cool down and relax. So right. as you listen to the album, each song has a different emotional destiny of where it's taking you. And in the yeah. middle, it peaks with the songs called uh, Ruthless and Act. And these are extremely aggressive songs, extremely <laughs> beat, beat is knocking as fast. It's not going to relax you, right? These are songs that right. you warm up into it. This is like we are taking quality action right now. And then we calm ourselves back down. So the whole album was designed to take you to emotional state, to help you become aware. We did this in 2017. And then, you know, life is life. So life goes on. But this whole thing, the seed was planted in my mind years ago. Of like we have some. And I couldn't wait till we got back to creating more music. You know? Man, and, and what you're doing and what you have been doing, what we're, you and I are doing, the process of, of implementing music with meditation, um, also with learning and with workshops and all that kind of stuff, it's called dual encoding. Yeah. And and there's so much there's so much research out there that actually – that actually supports what we're doing and how it helps aiding learning and motivation and focus and all that good stuff. You hit it on the head. So look, we love music. It feels good. It's fun to be around music. I love being on a mic. You make incredible beats. Like it's all this love and stuff and that's wonderful. But then you get to the science and the science is robust that when you learn with music and so you have melody behind you when you're learning information, you have twice as much the chance to retain that information in your brain. And it's called dual encoding. And when you think about it, we do this naturally with kids, right? Think about preschool, kindergarten, first grade, second grade. Maybe it starts to fade at the end of grammar school, but they're learning through music. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. Even the ABCs have a rhythm to them. Everything is learned through a, a rhythm. And then at some point in our education, we kind of go away from learning with rhythm and we just kind of get into like, hey, we gotta be quiet. We got to study, like, which is how it is. All we're doing is tapping into a learning modality that is so potent, so powerful. And if we're going to deliver mental skills training, uh, meditation, 
uh, affirmations, yeah. wisdom, all this stuff. We're going to do it with melody because it gives your brain so much of a better chance to retain this information and take it in. And then down the line, say we've been training you to a song called Vibration, right? Say we've been training you to that song and you're listening, you're doing it, you're listening, you're listening. And then down, it could be a year, two, three, four, five years down the line. You just hear that beat. It can take you back to that state. You can remember all of a sudden all the lyrics that were in that song, even if you didn't know you knew. Once right. you hear that melody, all of a sudden you're like, oh, I know the lyrics. And now the information is there, you know. So dual encoding really just backs up everything that we intuitively know, that learning with music helps you remember stuff. Everyone knows when a certain melody comes on the radio, all of a sudden you start singing along and you didn't realize you knew the words. But then there the words are, <laughs> right? So that's the power of it. Totally, man. It's it's training the unconscious mind. And uh, that's powerful. That's powerful. And for my listeners, if you want to learn more about dual encoding, right there on the screen is just go on scholar.google.com, type in dual encoding. You'll learn. There's tons and tons of articles on, on the research. So check it out. So for me, this is the most exciting part of the show because we get to share with the world right now what we're doing. And Graham and I have been spending the last few months every week together making music. And we are releasing today. Um, we'll talk a little bit about some of our, our albums that are going to be coming out, what we're, the format and how we're going to release the stuff every week, every other week. But we're going to talk about the song Vibration, man. Um, I'm so, this song is just so I'm, I'm excited. I can't even speak because it's pretty cool. So share with my listeners a little bit about vibration and, and your goodness behind the words. Man, uh, it's got incredible music that you've made. And this song is about being authentically who you are, right? So the vibration, tapping into your vibration, having the courage to be who you are. I think we go through life, G, a lot of times comparing ourselves to other people, uh, especially we live in a modern world with all this social media and all this stuff. And if you notice when we compare ourselves to other people, right, it can be devastating. Uh, it's just it just takes us out. And so what we're doing with this song is we're helping align people with their most authentic self yeah. and helping align with the. Selves and connect with their most authentic self um, and then not worry so much about comparing to other people. Right. It's about. Hey, how much am I being really who I am in this world and trusting that? And of course, that that's vulnerable, right? That can be a vulnerable experience, uncomfortable. So this song, man, Vibration, it just grooves you right into the space, man. The beat you made, the way you tied it in together, starting with my voice and bringing the beat in. It's poetic, man. Uh, it really <laughs> drops you into a zone. It so does. Our, and that's our intention is to line you up with your most authentic self. You know, that's the intention. Totally. And you know what I love about the song is that and I, I don't know if a lot of people really tap into this, this understanding, but we are vibration. I mean, we are all of us. And if you sit there and you can actually tap into your breath, your meditation, you can really feel the system move inside you. And I think we're so busy every day that we don't really understand the frequency that's moving within our body and how we can use that. And it's called energy, right? That's the vibration. And Man, it's to me when we were doing this song and you were just flowing, like as I was editing this song, I was like, oh yeah, this is great. You know, this is what it's all about. And and I know that people are going to feel the same way because you and I have already put it out there to a lot of people and they've had that same reaction to that to the, that song. Without a doubt. I mean, we, we drop into a zone ourselves when we make the music, you know, so we are living peak performance ourselves, you know. Yes, me and you are coaches and we do this work and we have the degrees and the experience and all that, but we're living it, you know, and I think one of the most powerful things about it is my hope is that people connect with the authenticity of it. That if I'm talking about vibration and you being authentic, you can feel that authenticity through us. And so when we tap in and do this work together, you know, the final thing we do before we record, you know, me and you bounce the idea back and forth. We're game planning, game planning, and then we make space and let it happen. Yeah. You know, I don't, we don't calculate when the words are going to show up. None of this is written at all as we just, we just let it happen in that space and we create a flow. So the music is flow. And the idea is people listen, they tap into that flow. And then you start working on the discipline to help yourself do that. You can't listen to music 24 hours a day, right? You got to like check in with life, but then you're <laughs> able to like, you know, connect yeah. yourself to that and do the work. So, so you line up with it. And then the more you listen to it, the more reps you're getting, you know? <laughs> 
you know, the, the process of it is really cool because it's, it's like any other performance, whether if it's in athletics, in the workplace, even in art, like you have to prepare, right? So for you and I, it's like when we sit down, we're hitting the ball back and forth, talking about words and ideas before you record. It's no difference from putting in the practice, putting in the pregame, you know, uh, meetings and all that stuff. So to me, I love that. It's like to, to really collaborate with you and then let it have enough space for let it to, to shine. And that's, that's been a kind of a cool, from where I sit, it's been cool. Come on, that's been the most fun is the collaboration and doing it together and then letting it come through us. You know, really we become vessels and that's what I work on is becoming a vessel. People ask me all the time, they'll be like, how did you say those words? <laughs> I'll be like, I don't know. <laughs> well, I let it come through me. What I did is I read all the books, I study, I practice saying the words, I've done Toastmasters, stand-up comedy, anything to practice uh, being profound and powerful in the present. Like I practiced that for decades. And so for a little five minute thing, we make a song, I give myself space to just be a vessel and I practice being a vessel and you let it come through you, you know? Um, but it is a skill you have to work on because we're definitely not, I'm not trying to read words. That would take me out of flow, you know, right. allowing it. But all that comes from all of our prep. By the time we release a song today, this is years and years of me and you working together let alone the decades of us practicing this by ourselves. You've spent decades practicing music. I've spent decades working on my voice, working on a microphone, working in a studio. To get to this moment where something like that can occur, we make a song like that, it is decades of work, you know? Decades, decades. And for my listeners, if you want to check out this song, go to my website, which is at the bottom of, of the screen here, gamefaceperformance.com, Mindset Music. There's a whole page dedicated to our music and every other week we're going to be releasing more music, but something that I think, which is a little bit different, what we're going to be doing every song that we actually release, we're going to actually throw in another meditation, a longer meditation, which Graham and I call MVPs, which is meditation, visualization, and powerful self-talk. So basically it's a longer version of the song, but with same meaning, but different words, elaborate a little bit on, on the MVP. So we're, two things coming out, right? We have a song, and then we have the MVP. The MVP, you can think of it like a remix. Call it like a meditation remix. There you go. So the song, right? The song's going to be three, four, five minutes, somewhere in there, and you listen to it, right? You just have it in the background. You can lift weights, whatever you're doing in your car. The meditation, you, you're going to get in a little bit more. So when you do the MVP, we're talking generally around 20 minutes, somewhere around there. So it's a longer commitment, and you're going to start with the meditation. So we're going to start with breathing and getting you into a zone. Then we're going to have you visualize, doing some visualization, working on what the song is training you to do. Align with your vibration, raise your vibration. Then I'm going to have you say some powerful affirmations to yourself, powerful self-talk. And so all of this takes place over 20 minutes. And then the last five minutes, we're going to help you hear the beat and just have space to sit there and breathe. Right? Yeah. So it's a longer experience, same melody, same rhythm. You're going to hear the beat come in and out but just a different way of training with melody, more elongated. And again, we'll call it the MVP remix. Yes. I love it. I love it. <laughs> and you know what we have in store, which I don't want to talk too much about it, but we have, we have about three albums that, that we are going to take you on a journey. So this album that we're going to be releasing as we go is called reflect. The next album is going to be um, respond. That's and right. then the next, the third album is going to be recovery. So just in short, Graham, just share a little bit about each album from your perspective. Yeah. Well, so it's a training process, right? So we're making three albums. Each album is going to have roughly 10 songs. So you're looking at 10, 30 training songs. Reflect is the first one, right? This is the ability to go in. All of Reflect is going in and lining everything up so you become super potent. Getting everything lined up, the most powerful you. We're going to go in and start doing all the work and Reflect. Then when we get to Respond, Respond, the second album, is you've lined everything up, you're powerful, you're potent. Now let's go put that with intentionality where we want to respond. What are you doing in this world? What has meaning and purpose for you? And we're going to go powerfully with intention and respond, right? And then after we put out all that energy, the third album is Reflect. Excuse me, this re uh, re Recover. And yeah. the third album is how we recover from reflecting and responding. Right, so we're exhausted, right? We just responded potent, we did all this great work. Now we have to go in and we have to recover and we have to relax. We have to let every, we have to let everything come down, everything regenerate. 
almost like a relaxing. Here's the spa part, the sleeping, and let everything regenerate. So now we can come back, reflect again, get ready to respond, and then do the whole process. So it's a yeah. three-part process of going in to create the energy, being potent with the energy when you respond, and then learning how to recover so you can do it again. And then you learn this cycle of energy creation and energy manifestation. Definitely. And you know, what we're going to be doing as well, uh, releasing this music every other week, is we're going to take this to uh, a bigger platform as well. So, you know, the vision of this is to do what we call shows, you know, mindset shows, and also taking this to corporations so we can teach all different kinds of groups within an organization um, how to learn more efficiently with music. 100%. I mean, this is for teams, groups, organizations, people that want this. And we know training exists, right? This, this exists. There's a, co there's, a, there's a coaching world, a training world. What we want to do with our trainings is we call them a show. So instead of just a 60 minute, you know, self-help training or some sort of personal development, we're going to come in, we're going to have music. And so we're going to train you with music and it's going to be an interactive process where you're going to go in, you're going to go in and meditate, you're going to visualize, and we're going to go back and forth and have this interactive thing with music and train. And then when we're done with the show, you get to have the music. So you get to do the training over and over again and hear it and reflect on it and get those reps in with the melody as you retain the information. Absolutely, man. I'm, I'm so thankful for just our, our energy and our collaboration. And I'm so excited to share this with everyone. And just, I'm excited for the journey. What What's going to come about just uh, going through this, man. This has been for me, it's a, uh, let's just say that my frequency is just break dancing right now. <laughs> That's right. I feel the same way. And I'm, ex I'm excited to do these shows. And, uh, you know, we're going to kick this off in December and get our first show going. I'm not exactly sure where yet, but I know it's happening. And so we're going to do it and come into 2021 and really put this in places where people want this and want to train like this. So I'm grateful. Uh, this is nothing but joy for me too, G. And I'm excited for what we're going to be doing, man. Right on, man. Well, Graham, thank you for your love and passion for this and uh, and the collaboration on this. This is uh, I'm excited for our future, and I want all my listeners to check us out. Go to GameFacePerformance.com, Mindset Music. You'll you'll see not only our song that we released today called Vibration, but every other week there's going to be new music and new MVPs. So check us out. Right on, everyone.